Good morning, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach in the continuation of the Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences uh, crani uh, Cranial and Spinal Trauma. Uh, we have Manuel Encarnacion here, uh, but first let me turn over to, to Nilesh, Dr. Nilesh from Krishna. Hello, Dr. Nilesh. Hi, hi, John. Hello. Okay, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, are we ready to go? We can start the meeting. Okay. Nilesh, could you introduce Manuel, please? Okay. Uh, oh, do you want to or do you want me to? If uh, you could, you please do that. I, I'll I have do to it. For that, uh, presentation. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. Hi, uh, Manuel's been yeah. doing presentations for a while. He's from the Dominican Republic, uh, and he learned Russian, and I just found out he's learning German. Uh, so I'll, let me just turn over to Manuel right now. Hi, hi, Manuel. Hello, John. How are you? Good, good. How are you, everybody? How are you? Good. I can see you got a lot of sun. Yes, yes. Moscow is very sunny today, especially today. Good to have you. Okay. Could you introduce yourself and uh, before you start your topic? Yes, uh, my name is Manuel, Manuel Encarnacion. I am third year resident of neurosurgery at the University of Rudin, Moscow, Russia. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I am ready, John, when you think it. Yes, we're all ready. Can I start? Sure. Well, we're going to start to talk about the history of the head trauma because it's very important to understand. It's a very important part of the neurosurgery. So the knowledge of the prehistoric medical practice comes from two disciplines, uh, which are one in one hand, the paleopathology. There is the science that studied the disease in the primitive man and the paleomedicine is the science we study the medical technique used in the past. Probably the first hominid appear, appears in Africa, the Australopithecus. This is the first one you can see here. Uh, later of the Australopithecus, we have the Homo habilis, who can use instrument and can be in bipedestation, but also sometimes need to hands, need to lens on the hands to walk. And later we have the Homo erectus, who can frankly walk in, in bipedestation. Since the men can start to use instruments, start to hurt each other, and the trauma, uh, head trauma, start since that time. Hippocrates, father of the medicine, he says, Nulum capitis bulnum contendendum yes. It means no head injury should be considered trivial. So all the head injuries are very, very important. A skull found in the background grave with the whole drill. Okay, are you there, Manuel? may have had a sl slow down of his connection. Are you there, Manuel? Okay, just hang on. Okay, I think he just dropped off. Just hang in there, he'll be back.
Hello, John. Hey, Manuel, go ahead, continue. Yes, yeah, sorry, my connection full. Okay. okay. Well, what I was saying, this civilization, in, in, in the Mesoamerica civilization, we have a lot of head injuries because um, you know the, the theory of the noble savage, it's an oxymoron. Because uh, like Rousseau say, the, the man is kind, the man is noble by nature, but it's the society who corrupt them. No, that's not true because since the humankind start to, to live in society, we have violence and we, we have a lot of head trauma. You can see here in the Inca civilization, you can, we can find the whole uh, drill hole, even the uh, cranioplasty using gold. In the ancient Egypt, Egypt we're gonna find the uh, Edwin Smith papyrus. It's a scroll of four metros. It have writing in the since the 3000 to 2005 year before Christ. And it's probably is the most older uh, document of medicine in the history of the humankind. What is important of, of, the, of this papyrus? In this papyrus, it's important because it has uh, 48 destruction of clinical cases. Um, 27 of these cases was about head injuries. In this papyrus, they don't, they work with science um, very precisely, not using magical uh, cultural stuff, not. Was working with the patient, with the patient. This papyrus was translated by James Hedrested was uh, um, Edwin Smith get the papyrus in the 1862, approximately this, in this time. People attribute the, the papyrus to Hemotech and they say he write them. From this case, the most important and is the case number six, the case number eight, and case 22. Why? Because in the case, in case number six is uh, it says uh, after a head injury in the open a skull, this mostly look like refers to the multi, multi molten copper, this corrugation inside the head. This is look like the first description of the gyrus of the brain. In the case number eight, it's in, in this case is important because it's described in which side of the body affecting the head injury. We have a case of the contra cop here. And the case 22, this case is amazing because this uh, talk about a patient who have uh, an injury, a fracture in the temporal, temporal bone and the patient cannot talk. So if we see in this case, 2004 years before, they already are talking about aphasia. In the, in the Greek times, the intellectual development of the neurosurgery began during this golden age of Greece. There is the ancient times, we have the Hippocrates uh, writing, um, he wrote in his school. And Hippocrates was very important, why? Because we have these tractates, Hippocrates tractates. The Hippocrates uh, to taste was the, the most important was the Corpus Hippocraticum. Have two parts very important, which talk about the head injury. The first one on the wound of the head and the epidemic, the other one. On the wound of the head, uh, Hippocrates described how the skull and bone are formed by two layers. And in the middle of them, we have the diploid. Also inside the meninges. He reported the anterior part of the skull it's thinner than the posterior. So it's more possible to have fractures in this area. He also say that the brief fractures need to be, need to, need to use the trepanation. Also he described in this, in the one of the head, the technical, the technique from the trepanation.
this is the this is a copy of the of the hypothesis. In the epidemic, uh, he talked about different cases of patients. Uh, it's like a, a history, a clinical history of very patient of a of a guy who who had a head injury and they used the trepanation on him, like uh, in the frontal bone. This is a, uh, um, a myth of Aesculus. This is a, a great performance on the third. The, the legend say he went to the oracle and the oracle say, you're gonna die by crushing by a house. A house is gonna crush you and you're gonna die. So he went out to the, to the valley, very big area to and live there to avoid um, to the house, his house, fall and kill him. And what happened? What the legends say? An eagle was flying with the turtle in the in in the in the hands that, in, with the turtle, and because the eagle need to open the turtle shell, let it let it let it fall in unfortunately fall in Asculus head. So this is another case of brain uh, brain injury, traumatic brain injury. In the Amoranic religion, we have the case that we have the the legend of the David and Goliath. It says uh, David was very small in compared with Goliath. He had a Honda and with the stone, he crushed uh, Goliath's head in the frontal bone. He fall and he died. And he killed him after that. So a very important figure in the Roman medicine was Aulus Aurelius Cornelius Celsus. Oh, sorry. His merit was called uh, appropriate medical knowledge at the time in his treatise, De Re Medicina. Uh, this book was lost until uh, 1443. Some of, uh, of this patient in, he described in his book suffered from this wound, lose their sense and no hear when they call it. Also, they have a fierce look and deadly gaze. Most often delirium come after three, uh, the third day or even the fifth day. Also is come with the convulsive movement. That was part of the description in this book, what he said. If we can see, was very precise description of the traumatic break injury and the consequences in the patient. He say uh, also, when, the, when we you need to operate the brain, the brain fractures, the, sorry, the, the skull fractures. So Galen, uh, he recommend remove all the bone fragments, particularly all the depression brain. If they said depression fractures need to remove all. Galen was also very optimistic, uh, more than Hippocrates about the brain injuries. Paul de Aegina, he was very, he was the first to suggest that the possibility of the intraventricular hemorrhage. He might also might hydrocephalus. John, are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Sorry for my Arabic. Uh, Abu Bakr Muhammad Iber Al Khasi. Uh, he was the first one to introduce a concept of concussion. That's very important. Uh, he, about the head injury, he wrote, it's among the most devastating uh, of all injuries. He advocated the surgery only when it's a penetrate injury of the skull. The outcome always was fatal. Uh, he understood that the skull fractures is because a compression of the brain re require elevation to prevent the lasting. So in the medieval time, you know, it wasn't the most uh, peaceful time. So if you if you know, if you ask, so the Egypt, the Greece, and the Roman already they talk about brain injury, but a lot of this knowledge was missing. Almost the Egypt uh, Egypt knowledge was in the Alexandria Alexandria uh, library. But as you, as you know, was burned by Julius Caesar in the 48 before Christ. So this a lot of knowledge of the Greece and the Egypt times was missing. 
Constantinus, uh, Constantinus Africanus introduced the Arabic medicine to the school of Salerno and, and to Europe also. Roger de Salerno, uh, in his book, uh, Chirurgia Practica, introduced an unusual technique of checking for the tear of the dura uh, to see if the cerebral fluid leaking. In that time, they don't know uh, uh, the function or what is the cerebral spinal fluid. For the leakage of the patient uh, with the skull fracture, what he do, what he did was uh, to see to take to the patient to hold the breath. So it's now we know this is a Balsalva maneuver, and he see if there is liquor going out of his of uh, also if there is bubbles. Lorik uh, Borgogni, Borgogni uh, was a surgical, in his surgical work, he uh, uh, appreciated the importance of the skull fracture, special one in the depressing skull fractures, should be elevated. Gaide Chaulaik. Uh, was the most influential surgery in the 14th to the 15th centuries. He used egg albumin to provide adequate hemostasis. Always was very difficult in that pay, in that time to the to the surgeons. His great contribution to the surgery uh, to the minute to the surgery was to write the most important work of the cranio cranio cerebral or cranio cerebral surgery. Tractus de fractura calvae sive cranei, in which he described the entire set of surgical instruments to use in cranial operation. Also, this was a systematic uh, tourist to compare mechanism classification. Even, even he, he, he made seven classification of the skull fractures. He was very famous because he operated one of the Medici family in the, because he had a fracture of, uh, of the occipital region. Dominique Jean Larey uh, was one of the surgeons of the Napoleon army. Uh, he was very famous because he make a lot of trepanation in the, even in the battlefield. So we can say that was one of the first uh, war surgeons, war neurosurgeons in the battlefield. Pancoa Sigot de Perron, uh, he was very famous because maybe no other surgeons uh, before him made more efforts for the cranial, cranial, cranial cervical and cranial. Uh, traumatism. He make uh, he's famous because he make a lot of experiment in life person. Remember, we don't have um, the treats uh, in that time. It was like almost normal make a uh, living experiment and even uh, vivisection, dissection in life. Brain trauma. In, in the surgical time, in the military surgery. The penetration, sur the penetration brain injuries become extremely frequent uh, with the introduction of the firearms in the 18th century. The manual of the Dr. John focused on the scalp wound and the depression fractures. This manual stresses the usefulness and the prophylactic and the, of the trepanation. He even used an algorithm for that. So we get to the first world war uh, and we can say we find a new way to kill each other from, the, from this time. During the first world war, the pioneer of the neurosurgery such as Harvey Cushing, he served in, served in the British and the US Air armies offering the traumatic brain injury patient, the most advanced treatment available of that time. I required to define that the management was only possible in specialized hospitals. 
In the Second World War, uh, this can be a, a, a full presentation apart. Uh, John, I am on time? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so during the Second World War, the care of the injury was provided by the better organized care system. Using a standardized instrumentation, the neurosurgery neuro is already standardized, is, is already settled, like a specialization. We have the blood transfusion, improvement of the anesthesia and the antiseptic. Specialized treatment for the head injury was promoted by the Oxford Group, uh, led by Sir Hugh Kerr, who created the mobile, the motorized neurosurgical unit in the battlefront. That was the first mobile unit was in, in Africa, in the north of Africa. The main or not only possible traumatic brain injuries treatment, however, was the surgery. There is, was no specific therapy for the traumatic brain injury. A fatal outcome was always expected. You can see here, this is the case of the traumatic brain injury, penetrating brain injury in a patient of the, in Italy, in the front of Italy. You see, and the debate regarding always uh, was the benefit of the delayed surgery or the uh, fast in the, in the moment surgery was always was fierce. But the evidence accumulated by the by the surgeons was make it fast, make it now. So after World War II, the interest of the traumatic brain injury declined. The general feeling was that severe cases were not amenable to successful treatment. In all of the self-fueling prophecy. However, However, this patient, oh, sorry, however, this patient uh, were ultimately dying because of the respiratory failure or the concept of the preventing treating respiratory complication. You can see here some uh, of the Vietnam War time. And also you can see here a patient who was using the Hamlet and prevent his do, uh, it's 100% death. Да. Да, сейчас. Окей. Sorry. So, the improvement of the diagnostic in intracranial lesion, the possibility of the uh, imaging in the intracranial vasculature by injection. Uh, you have we, we remember the Egadmonis when he, have, uh, he was a Portuguese uh, doctor, he introduced in 1927 the angiography. And later, the most, one of the most important was the, or maybe the, one of the most important of the, of the past century was the, <laughs> the standard diagnosis of the, of the CT was in the in October of the 19, 1971 was made the first CT scan. And a couple of years later, of course, they, they got the Nobel Prize. In the 70s, also it's important in Glasgow, Glasgow City, in the, by uh, Janetta and his group, the development of the Glasgow Comet scale who give to us the later the outcome of the patient. We already, we don't wanna even talk about the, the part of the Glasgow Common Scale, we already know here. So the new problem we have of the traumatic brain injury, as with the beginning, we, we find, as, as I said, we find a new way to kill each other. The traumatic brain injury in this time, mostly in the war zone, are very catastrophic. There is one more than 20, 27,000 article of the ICP at the same database. And the traumatic brain injury is a huge problem in the developed country, in the outcome country, like in Latin America or the Caribbean. Why for the, uh, the lack of the knowledge of education, they use the, the right protection. 
in the um, in the day by day in the car in the motorcycle. So thank you for your attention. Gracias por la atención.